let us study the power series its radius and interval of convergence a power series is a series of the form this one here z not is called center of the power series it is a fixed number if z not is zero we get a power series centered at zero of the form this one to find the radius of convergence of a power series we use the ratio test with the help of the ratio test after evaluating these limits we get a number l and then a radius of convergence is equal to 1 over l sometime we use the root test to find the number l and then r is equal to 1 over l it is also convenient to use directly this formula or this formula and find the radius of convergence to find interval of convergence from the given series or from the given question we substitute z minus z not absolute less than r we simplify this to find the value of z now we check whether the series is convergent or divergent at the end point this one r at this end point so we put z is equal to z not minus r in the given question and simplify this so we get a new series then we check the convergence of the new series let us say the new series is convergent at the end point z not minus r then we put z is equal to z not plus r and simplify this to get a new series and again we check the convergence of the new series let the new series is divergent at the point z not plus r in this case interval of convergence is given by this one on the left hand side we use the closed bracket and on the right hand side we use the open bracket because it is convergent at the point this one and divergent at the point this one if we do the same process but we get that the series is convergent at both end points then interval of convergence is given by this one you can see we use closed bracket on both sides and if it is divergent at both end points then interval of convergence is given by this one here we use open brackets on both sides let us use our method to find the radius of convergence and interval of convergence for the power series given in this example we start to write the formula for the radius of convergence which is given by a n divided by a n plus 1 and now let us say this is 2 now here the value of a n this is given by 1 over n square 9 power n and from this we can get the value of a n plus 1 just replace n by n plus 1 so we get the value of a n plus 1 substituting these values in 2 we get that r is equal to limit n a protest to infinity a n a n is 1 over n square 9 power n divided by a n plus 1 so we can write 1 over n plus 1 whole square 9 power n plus 1 and now let us simplify this so if we simplify this 
we get limits n approaches to infinity and now we get 1 over n square 9 power n into n plus 1 whole square 9 power n plus 1 divided by 1. And from this, if we further simplify this, we get limit n approaches to infinity. And now we can write n plus 1 whole square divided by n square. So we write it n plus 1 divided by n whole square. Now from 9 power n plus 1 divided by 9 power n, from this we get 9. And now if we simplify it, we take 9 as common and limit n approaches to infinity. And from this now we get 1 plus 1 over n whole square. And if we apply the limits, we get 9 into 1 plus 0. So radius of convergence for this power series is 9. To find interval of convergence, we know that we put z minus z naught absolute less than r. And from this we get z minus 5 absolute is less than 9. If we further simplify this, we get minus 9 is less than z minus 5, which is less than 9. And from this we obtain 5 minus 9 is less than z, which is less than 5 plus 9. And if we further simplify this, we have minus 4 is less than z, and z is less than 14. Now the next task is to check the convergence at the end point. Let us take the end point z is equal to 14. So if we put z is equal to 14 in the given series 1, 1 implies that n is from 1 to infinity, 14 minus 5 power n divided by n square 9 power n. And if we simplify this, we get 9 power n divided by n square 9 power n. n is from 1 to infinity. 9 power n will cancel with 9 power n. So we get the series 1 over n square, where n is from 1 to infinity. And by the p series, we can see it here. If this p is greater than 1, then we say that the series is convergent. So this implies that it is convergent. Now let us check the series at the other endpoint. The next endpoint end is z is equal to minus 4. So let us put z is equal to minus 4 in 1. So 1 becomes n is from 1 to infinity. Minus 4 minus 5 power n divided by n square. 9 power n. And from this we get summation minus 9 power n divided by n square. 9 power n. n is from 1 to infinity. And this can be further simplified as summation minus 1 power n, 9 power n divided by n square 9 power n. 9 power n will cancel with the 9 power n. So we get an alternating series. 
minus one power n divided by n square, where n is from one to infinity. Since it is an alternating series, we use the absolute convergence test, which says that if we are given an alternating series, then this alternating series is said to be absolutely convergent. If the absolute value of summation a n is convergent. So let us take the absolute convergence. So here now we use summation a n absolute. n is from one to infinity and it will become summation from one to infinity one over n square. So we can see that a n absolute here is one over n square, which is again the p series and p is greater than one. So by p series, we can say that summation a n absolute is convergent. And this implies that the given series which is minus one power n divided by n square is convergent. Now, since this is convergent at both endpoint minus four and 14, so interval of convergence is given by square brackets minus four to 14. And that is the required solution. Now consider example number two. Here we use the same procedure. So a n is equal to one over n, two power n. And from this we can obtain the value of a n plus one, which is equal to one over n plus one n to two power n plus one. Now, radius of convergence r is equal to limits n approaches to infinity a n divided by a n plus one. Let us substitute values here. So we have limit n approaches to infinity. The value of a n is one over n two power n and the value of a n plus one. So if we convert division into multiplication, we have n plus one into two power n plus one divided by one. And from this we obtain limit n approaches to infinity. Two power n will cancel with two power n plus one. So here we have only n and n plus one whole divided by n can be written here. So from this we get limits n approaches to infinity. Let us take two outside of the bracket. So we have one plus one over n and we write two here. So if we simplify this, we get two into one plus zero. So radius of convergence is equal to two. In a similar procedure, now we find interval of convergence. So using the values, we have Z minus three absolute is less than two. And from this we get minus two is less than Z minus three which is less than plus two, which gives minus two plus three is less than Z, which is less than two plus three. And from this we obtain one is less than Z and Z is less than five. Now the next task is to find the convergence at the end point. 
So let us take the first endpoint at z is equal to 5. Putting z is equal to 5 in the given question, we get summation n is from 1 to infinity 5 minus 3 whole power n divided by n into 2 power n. And if we simplify this, we get 2 power n divided by n 2 power n, n is from 1 to infinity. Now, 2 power n will cancel with 2 power n and we get a new series, which is 1 over n. n is from 1 to infinity. And by the p series, we can see p is 1 here. So it is divergent. Now let us take the next endpoint, z is equal to 1. So substituting z is equal to 1 in 1, we get summation 1 minus 3 power n divided by n 2 power n. n is from 1 to infinity. If we simplify this, we get minus 2 power n divided by n into 2 power n, n is from 1 to infinity. If we further simplify this, we have n is from 1 to infinity, this is minus 1 power n into 2 power n, divided by n into 2 power n, 2 power n will cancel with 2 power n, and we get a new series, minus 1 power n, divided by n, n is from 1 to infinity. And we can see that this is an alternating series. So first of all, let us check whether it is absolutely convergent or not. So to take the absolute value of this series, a n absolute, we have n is from 1 to infinity and we get a positive term series 1 over n which we can see is not convergent or it is divergent by the p series so we write it is not absolutely convergent so when an alternating series is not absolutely convergent then we use the alternating series test which says that an alternating series is convergent if it satisfies two conditions. The first one, take limits and approaches to infinity of a n and the answer must be zero. The second one, a n must be a decreasing sequence. So let us take limits n approaches to infinity of a n here a n is 1 over n. So limit n approaches to infinity of 1 over n is 0. So the first condition is satisfied. For the second condition, we can see that 1 over n plus 1 is less than 1 over n. And now a n plus 1 is actually 1 over n plus 1 which is less than a n, a n is 1 over n. So it says that the sequence a n is a decreasing sequence. So since both conditions are satisfied, now we can say that it is convergent. It is actually conditionally convergent. Now, interval of convergent that must be equal to look at the first endpoint which is one and the second endpoint which is five and we can see at five the series is divergent so here we use the parenthesis and in the left hand side it is convergent at one so here we use the square brackets so interval of convergent is given by this one. That's all.